Happy Sabbath and welcome to the 11th lesson of the third quarter of the Teens Cornerstone Connection lesson of 2023. This week we have Baraka at the mission story. In the orchestra we have Amy and Ariane on the violin, Sakai on the trumpet, and Sid on the piano. For the lesson panel we have some of the Nairobi Central teens along with their teens teachers. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Baraka, and I'll be taking us through the, the mission story for today. Piano, Pathfinders, and Jesus. Like the previous mission story, this mission story also comes from the country of Latvia that is located in Europe, specifically in the Baltic Sea, and its capital is called Riga. Um, just a fun fact about the country, the person who invented the jeans was a Latvian tailor. Latvian is one of the oldest languages in Europe. And the Latvian flag is also one of the oldest flags worldwide. Now getting into the story, the story is also about a little girl called Anna, the same one from the previous story. Um, have you ever met someone and you just hit it off, like you just knew that this is like the right person, you became friends immediately possibly because of shared interests and stuff like that. This was the case with Anna and her friend Emilia. They both met at music school where they were both learning piano. Um, and as they became friends, they began to realize that they shared a lot more interests. They both loved music, they both loved dogs, they both loved piano, and they both did gymnastics. However, if there was something different, it was that Anna loved going for Pathfinders, but Emilia wasn't really into Pathfinders. She, in fact, she didn't go to church at all. And so one time Anna invites her friend Emilia for a Pathfinder campery. And as for that entire week, while Emilia was at Pathfinders, they did a lot of singing, they enjoyed camping. And as time went on, Emilia began to find that she loved Pathfinders more and more. And as a result, she began to come for Pathfinders. Every time there was a meeting, she began to go to church more. They began holding Bible studies together. And, and even started going to church. And eventually, this, this influence from Anna spread over to not just Emilia, but her family as well. Her little brother also began going to church and they joined the Pathfinders together. Anna says, I love Jesus and I love reading the Bible. I'm sharing this truth with others. I believe like Anna, all of us as Adventists have the responsibility to bear in terms of sharing the message with other people. It may not involve going far to different countries, but you could do it right where you are with your closest friends. Part of this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help support Pathfinders like Anna and Emilia in Latvia. The offering will help construct a building in Latvia's capital where children like Anna can learn more about Jesus. We'll now say a short prayer for the 13th Sabbath offering so that it may fulfill its intended purpose. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life. We thank you for everything you've given us. Dear God, we also want to thank you for your word, and we thank you that children around the world can spread the word. We pray for the 13th Sabbath offering that you may please bless it and help it build a, a building in Latvia where children can learn more and more about Jesus and come to know you all in preparation for your second coming. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. Welcome back again to our Cornerstone Connection lesson for this quarter, and we are on lesson number 11, Line in the Sand. Now, before we begin, I'd like my panelists here to introduce themselves, starting from my extreme left. Uh, my name is Umiri Kibwage. Uh, hi, my name is Benithian Sayana. Yes, hello everyone, and my name is Kevin, one of the facilitators of the class. Thank you. And my name is Bridget Ogega. I'll be your moderator for today. So before we begin, I'd like to invite Omweri to kindly pray for us. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for today, for guiding us all here to teach this lesson, Lord. Please help the people that listen to it to learn from you, Lord, and help us to speak not from ourselves, but from the Holy Spirit. Just let me pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Omweri. Now, as I had mentioned, our lesson is entitled, Line in the Sand. And I just got a bit curious to look up what line in the sand means. And line in the sand means a point beyond which one will not go. So even in our backdrop for today's lesson, I invite you to open your lessons with me. So if you look at the backdrop just there, there's, uh, there's a few young people who are, seem, they seem to be in the beach, and there's a line that has been drawn in the sand of that beach. And there are two youth on one side and three youth on one side, and there's one who's right in the middle. And it's as though he's being coerced to go to either side. And so we'll look at how um, that applies to our lesson. There is a fight between good and evil in this day and age. And it is for us to choose. Do we want to be on the good side or do we want to be on the evil side? And whichever side we choose, is it easy to make that choice? And so that is what we'll be discussing today. So I'd like to invite teacher Kevin to give us an illustration just before we get right into our lesson today. Yeah, just more of a line in the sun. You know, just to think about it, you know, when I know most of us love swimming, so and, and as you swim, there's usually a barrier they put in between the shallow waters and, and the deep waters. And, and any time, even when you go to the beach, you want to swim and you cross that line or that kind of, uh, you know, something that has been put together, then that confirms to you that you possibly are a good swimmer, an amazing swimmer, or in other words, you are ready to take the risk. So, and as we come back to today's lesson, which is more of the illustration, there is an illustration that has been shared here that talks about casinos. And I know most of us have seen casinos. So there is a story of a casino, um, a story that seemed like a scam, whereby there is this guy who we would call Abramov. So Abramov was always there in all, the, in all the casinos. You know, where they wanted to close a casino, the guy was there. Where he wanted to open one, he was there. And so in this specific course, whenever they wanted to close one casino in that area, or open another, the guy almost made sure that he's there and he will profit from it. However, as that proceeded on and he went on made, making money, in 1999, the state of Alabama considered launching its own national lottery kind of a thing. And, and so because Abramov wanted to benefit, he sponsored a motion um, of you know, around $1.3 million dollars and put some banners to the churches so that the churches can now reject that kind of a thing. And you know what, people in church were like, yeah, this is a worthy cause, you should reject you know, national lottery by our state. And at the end of it all, he may have won, but the church members never knew that the same money they are using to object is done by the casinos. And so as we get on with the lesson, we get to learn that the guy was playing all odds. He was a double-edged kind of a person. And those, this saga reminds us of what has been written in the Bible, that no one can serve two masters. It's either you love one or hate another one. You know, that's from Matthew 6, 24. And so at the end of it all, Abramov was, um, you know, was arrested and he pleaded guilty to conspiracy, fraud, tax evasion, among us, all this. And all his friends' um, activities and everything forever tarnished, were tarnished. 
And, and so like the story of Achan, Joshua's farewell message reminds us that you can't serve both God and man. And as he says in Joshua 24, 15, you have to choose which side you want to fall. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you for that illustration. And I just want to invite Silas to take us into our story for today. So the end of our story today is about the goodbye Joshua gave to the Israelites, his parting shot. So Joshua told the Israelites to basically keep all the laws and reminded them of each and every law and its consequence. And he says that you could choose to serve the gods of your ancestors or the gods of the Amorites and all these people who's, who live around you. But he will remain true to his God, him and his house. So this basically means that what you choose to do is a personal decision. It's not a corporate decision. It's your own decision, not our decision. It's personal. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Silas, for that. I like what he said, that salvation is personal. So your parents, your relatives may have chosen salvation, but that doesn't mean that it is automatic for you as an individual that you'll be saved. It is for you to choose salvation individually. And it's interesting even just to connect last week's lesson and this week's. Last week was the real, real estate section where now the Israelites were occupying the different places they were given on the promised land. And in today's lesson, we are seeing that um, it, time has passed and so they have settled in and they, they are not being troubled anymore. So they're just living at peace in this place. But bear in mind that they still haven't conquered all the nations that they were supposed to conquer. So they're feeling like they're a bit complacent and um, they're okay, they don't need to conquer anymore. So Joshua, who at this point is quite old and realizes that, you know what, my days are almost coming to an end, he reminds them that, you know what, yes, you may be in the promised land, but there's still more that you need to do. You still haven't conquered this conquered it all. And remember, all this victory is coming from the Lord. And it's interesting because just um, a few lessons ago, we had also seen how Moses gave his parting shot to the Israelites and how he was heartbroken when he saw that the Israelites did not follow all the laws of God, even as they had promised. But it's interesting as we have seen and we'll continue to see in our lesson today that God still chooses to work with them even amidst um, their complacency. So, Omweri, what do you think about um, our lesson today? In the what do you think section of the lesson, there are two questions which have multiple choice answers. The first one is it asks you to define courage. The choices are as following. The willingness to put everything on the line for what you believe, an attitude that isn't blocked by obstacles and pushed forward with faith, the ability to focus on what's truly important. I think that the best definition for courage here is the first one, the willingness to put everything on the line for what you believe. Because you need to be courageous, especially now, as you'll normally be mocked for doing things that are considered, you'll be called churchy, or like the Bible follower, because you're doing the things of God. So you need to be courageous to put your friendships on the line. And the second question is, what tempted the Israelites to turn from God in Joshua's time? These are the choices. The Canaanite religions following God was just too complicated. They got too comfortable in their new land. They started thinking they could handle things themselves. I think all of these choices had a part to play in them turning away from God. Because these Canaanite religions... They were just around them, and as we have heard, they didn't destroy all of the nations around them. So these Canaanite religions were inviting them. And following God, the Mosaic law was, it had a lot of rules and regulations that they had to follow. And these people, they weren't used to that because they were just from Egypt. They got too comfortable in their own land, as I've just heard from the story, and they started thinking they could handle things themselves. So when you think that, you don't need God to do something, then you'll just do
do it by your own power. And as we know, us as humans, we're not strong enough to do it. That's what I have. Amen. Thank you for that. Now, just to remind you that our scripture story today is from Joshua chapter 23 and 24. And if you read through one of the things you realize Joshua is saying is that he tells these Israelites that they need to be very courageous to keep all the laws and the commandments of God. And I just want to pose a question to my panelists, panelists here. Usually, being told to be courageous would be maybe in a situation or in a circumstance like war, or when you're going to, to battle or to face something, maybe an examination, you're being told, be courageous. But why do you think following the laws of God requires someone to be courageous? Why is he telling them you need to be very courageous? Maybe, teacher Kevin, you can start. Yeah, myself, personally, the word courage is, it's something that sometimes you don't know how to define it or sometimes how it's not supposed to be defined. But when the lesson speaks about the willingness to put everything on the line for what you believe in, you know, if, if, if you train maybe to do a 10 kilometer run, for example, it will actually need you to do some practice. But aside from that, it needs you to, take, to have to gather some courage and believe that you're going to start and end. So in the same case, while you apply the word of God, while you're trying to see what works and what doesn't work, and when maybe a certain verse talks about this and, and about that, then it also needs courage because, you know, people nowadays believe that, you know what, anything can be compromised. But for you to follow God's word, then you need courage to believe, to tell guys that, you know what, this is the way it's supposed to be, this way interpreted, and, and because the interpretation is also in the same Bible. This is supposed to be followed, so it needs courage and strength, and which also means if you are courageous enough, then you won't be swayed side to side by other people's opinion or what they think is right or wrong. So that's, that's what I think maybe. Yeah. Amen, amen. Remember that we are in a war. We are in a battle. It's flesh against spirit. The world against uh, God's heaven. And so um, these forces of evil are so strong that even if you read through the Bible in Paul's letters, he keeps telling us that we need to put on the full armor of God. So yes, we are in a spiritual war. And that is why Joshua was saying we need to be very courageous to keep the laws of God. Because naturally, as man, we are just inclined to sin. It's very easy to sin. Paul himself says that the things I wish to do, I do not. But those things that I do not wish to do, those are the ones I do. And so it takes some courage to actually fulfill the law of God. And right even here in our lesson for today, there's a question that was saying, uh, true or false, maybe I'll ask one of our panelists, Silas, there's a question that was saying, is it true or false? Do you think that God would rather you be a hypocritical Christian or you be an overt atheist? What are your thoughts on, it, on this? Okay, I think that God would want you to either be fully devoted to him or not devoted. So there's no line. It's either hot or cold. There's no lukewarm. Amen. I love what you've said. You're either hot or cold. And I'd just like to invite Omweri to read for us the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 15 to 16. So Revelation, chapter 3, verse 15 to 16, just to see what, what does God want for us in terms of how we live as Christians. Revelation chapter 3 verse 15 and 16 says, I know your works, you are neither cold nor hot, would that you are cold or hot. So because you, you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Thank you for that. Now one thing that we are told of the church in the last days, which is the church that we are living in, is that that church is described as being neither cold nor hot. That is lukewarm, and that is a very dangerous state to be in. So God would rather you either just be a complete atheist or you are for his side. And so um, it is a lesson for us. In fact, in James chapter 1, verse 8, we are told that a double-minded man is unstable. A double-minded man is unstable. So even in our lesson today, we are being told it is for us to choose. Do you want to be of the world or do you want to be 
of Christ. And you cannot be both because we are told that a friend of the world is an enemy of God. And uh, the last question even that is also right there in our lesson that says that um, as you look over your life, has God been faithful to you? And now the part that I want us to, to even answer, have you been faithful to God? How might, be, how might the two be related? Is there a relationship between us being faithful and God being faithful to us? Uh, maybe we can have uh, Omweri uh, give their thoughts on that. So do you think there's a relationship between us being faithful and God being faithful back to us? I think that God will always be faithful to us because he's, as he says his name is I am who I am, meaning that he doesn't change. So, but human beings are in constant, they change from day to day. So I think that God will always be faithful to us, but as human beings, our faithfulness to him can, can waver. That's true. Maybe to check in, any thoughts on that? Um, on aspects of, of, of us being faithful and remaining in God's word, we live in a world whereby we as young people are, you know, tempted by so many things, you know. You know, you get to a point and you realize that so and so is saying, I think this is the right way, then another one says that's the right way. But however, the word of God has its own way. And because we believe in a God who is living and who is there for each one of us, despite your faith, despite what you are doing in this world, then we have to remain faithful to God's word. We have to do that which is said and which is written. And, and, and God also affirms that whatever becomes a challenge and even in our difficulties, he always comes to help us and support us. And he doesn't promise that if we keep his word to the full that there won't be challenges. He says that there will be challenges, there will be tribulations, but he will walk us through those challenges. So faithfulness is key and you need it as young people, even as you go through the various challenges and you know, life's opportunities and everything we go through every other day. Amen. I like what you've said that indeed our God will forever be faithful. And even as Umweri added and said that human beings tend to change based on their circumstances. But one thing that I have found very practical to me in my life is any time God has done something that you feel is truly amazing, write it down and put it in a jar somewhere. And then later on, when you, you start feeling like things are not working out, go back, open that jar and see, what is this that God did for me? And truly, just looking back at how God has been faithful to you, it will be a reminder and an encouragement even for you going forth that truly you can make it and God is forever faithful to us. Now, I'd like to invite Omweri to just quickly take us through our key text for today. The key text is from Joshua 24, verse 15. And it says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Here we can see, as Joshua says, there is no partiality. You'll either serve God or the Amorite gods around them. Uh, there's a question here for the Monday section. When the Israelites vowed to follow God, Joshua charged them to get rid of their idols. What changes could you and your could you, your family, and your church make to to follow God more fully? I think we can follow what Joshua said. He told them to get rid of their idols. There are things in our lives that we put above God that cause us to sin and we are okay with that. And these, these are our idols. Whether it's your social media or even your work or school. So I think we should remember to put God first in all that we do. We shouldn't like forsake the Sabbath to do work or we shouldn't waste time on social media instead of reading the Bible or spending time in prayer. I think this is what you can do as a family to grow in God. Amen. And even uh, just to add that from our recently concluded camp meetings worldwide, um, it is evident that we are being encouraged to get involved. So one way in which we can fully be involved in God's work is just to apply our spiritual gifts and ministries even as is said um, in our fundamental beliefs. So we are encouraged that in this church that we have in this day and age, 
we have enough resources within us to facilitate the work of God to go forth. So I just like to encourage you, our dear viewer, whatever talent you have, if it is singing, if it is preaching, if it is showing compassion, whatever it is, use it to the utmost to serve the Lord. Because indeed it is through serving God that we can fully get involved and fully be on his side, such that the wiles of the devil will not take us and we will be able to stand to the end. And at this point, I'd just like to uh, invite Teacher Kevin to bring in the spirit of prophecy and apply it to our lesson today, which is lying in the sand. Yeah, today's spirit of prophecy comes from uh, Patriarchs and Prophets, chapter 49, whose is entitled The Last Words of Joshua. And, and maybe if I can read something small um, from there, then maybe share two or three excerpts that said, some years had passed since the people had settled in their possessions and already could be seen cropping out of the same evils that had therefore brought judgments upon Israel. So as Joshua felt the infirmities of age stealing upon him and realized that his work must soon close, he was filled with anxiety for the future of his people. It was with more than a father's interest that he would, that he would uh, feel obliged to share to the people. And then down there, um, um, as I quote, so he, as they gathered once more about their age chief, so he thought in his own timings that it's time to gather people. Ye have seen, he said, all that the Lord your God has done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that has fought for you. But although the Canaanites had been subdued, they still possessed a considerable portion of the land promised to Israel, and Joshua exhorted his people not to settle down at ease. So what we are learning from there and, uh, and, and down there in that chapter is that Joshua realized that age was catching up. And he realized that the people, of, you know, the Israelites had started settling down to the Canaanites' behavior. They had become too comfortable and had felt that in their own way that they can do things without God. So he thought, you know what? Let me give some words to them. And part of what he said, and, and from what, um, in, in part of the uh, Tuesday part and all that, is that people need to still stand with God. Eh? And at the end of it all, they can't be standing on God or on the other side. It has to be one of the ways. And so that's why this chapter has been written, so that it can try to teach us on what Joshua wanted people to learn. And as we come, a last part of this that says, the last part which is uh, of the chapter says, Joshua's work for Israel was done. He had wholly followed the Lord. And in the book of God, he is written. And, and before I proceed on, it's my prayer that as we do what we do on this world, we can carefully and prayerfully believe that, you know what, my name is written in the book of God. And, and maybe before I proceed, I may want to find out or ask one of the teens, maybe because this is something that caught my attention. Do you think um, it will be a good thing for you to have done all for God and your name is not written? Maybe one of you can respond, one of the teens. No, that's it. So, yeah. Okay. It will be very shameful that you're here bringing others to Christ, but you yourself said you have not truly accepted Christ and while those who heard you speak and decided to follow Christ are, are going to heaven you're, you're going to hell when you're the one who brought them into Christ it doesn't sound good Amen, Amen and thank you to what is just said you know, something that is carefully put in the book of Patriarchs and Prophets is that the noblest testimony to his character as a public leader is the history of the generation that had enjoyed his labors. Israel served all the days of Joshua. They served God. And to the end, the elders outlived that. So what we get from that is that we as Christians, we as believers, as you serve, we as young people, whether you are in school, whether you are in college, as you serve God, we need to question and you need to ask ourselves, are we really doing it? And are we really doing what God has asked to do so that we don't do something and we end up in being vain? And when your days 
on this world. You know, when your days are coming to the end, like Joshua realized, so will it be called up to you? Will, will God say that, you know what, he has done his work and, and his, his name I have written in my book? Will God say that? So that's a challenge for us, even as we live our lives on a daily basis. Amen. Thank you so much, Teacher Kevin, for that insight. Now, even as Omeri had read for us the key text, Joshua gave them two options. Do you want to serve the gods your ancestors served before, beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites? Or do you want to serve the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt? And I don't know, I just want you guys to think along with me. Why, why were these people so keen on serving these Canaanite gods? Because even if you read the history of the Canaanite gods, these gods, they really wanted to be regularly reminded that they need to take care of their people. Even if you remember the story of Elijah um, and the prophets of Baal, um, those prophets had to cry out, they had to cut themselves, they had to do such queer things to actually call their gods. But you realize that our God, the Lord our God, who is the true God, he doesn't need to be reminded, he doesn't need to be coaxed, nothing. He knows what is best for us, and whenever it, his, it is his appointed time, he will give it to us. So to me, it's, it's just a mystery how these people still wanted to serve gods who wanted to be reminded of their duties. But if you think about it realistically and practically, even in our lives, we too serve gods that if someone else looks at us, they'll be like, why are you serving such a god? And so it's, it's just a reminder to us that look at what the Lord has done for you. He has been faithful and he has proven himself faithful time and time again. And truly, he deserves to be worshipped. So I'll just invite um, Silas to take us through the punchlines for this lesson today. Okay, the punchlines are a few verses which I'll choose the ones that speak to me the most, which is Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. It says... What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet who face their soul? Or what can anyone give in chance for their soul? This basically means you have everything except your soul. And uh, the last one is Proverbs 3 verse 31 to 34. It says, Do not envy the violent or choose on any of their ways. For the Lord detests the person perverse but takes the upright into its confidence the lord's curse is on the house of the wicked but he blesses the home of the righteous he mocks proud mockers but shows favor to the humble and oppressed so we learn from this text that what we do is what we decide to do is what god will help us do if we decide to be on his side he will help us through every challenge in this life. And my prayer is that each one of you will choose his side and he will help you through all means. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Silas, for that. Um, I'd like to invite Omweri to read for us the further insights in our lesson for today. It's from Steps to Christ, page 48. By, by yielding up your will to Christ, you ally yourself with the power that is above all principalities and powers. You will have strength from above to hold you steadfast, and thus, through constant surrender to God, you will be enabled to live the new life, even the life of faith. Amen. Thank you so much for bringing that up. And even as we are learning in our lesson today that, yes, we have a, choice, a side to choose, and though it may be hard to choose the side of the Lord, because as we have seen, we have three very powerful enemies. The devil who has been working for so many years, the world which constantly seeks to bring us um, very close to it and to follow its ways, and the flesh that is within us that just wants to keep on sinning. So as much as we have those three enemies, remember that we have a more powerful God who is able to stand against all that. And even as the uh, Father Insight has said, that by us yielding our will to him, surrendering ourselves to him, and just letting him use us and work within us, then we can be able to overcome all this. Yes, the flesh might fight against you, but the Spirit of God, 
is even more powerful than that. And even just uh, before we close, I'd like to invite Chuck Kevin to give some closing remarks. Yeah, um, as you continue with the lesson, or as you come to the end of the lesson, we realize that Joshua gave the people something to stand on. And even as, as I read that, I would want to just take us all back to the chapter 49 that we read, the last words of Joshua, that's patriarchs and prophets, that says, God is a life giver. From the beginning, all his laws were ordained to life, but sin broke in upon the order that God had established and this God followed. So long as sin exists, suffering and death are inevitable. It is only because the Redeemer has borne the curse of sin in on our behalf that man can hope to escape in his own person its dire results. So Joshua gave us a choice and he told us that for him and his family, he will serve God. But for you guys, you have to choose. So same case to you young person watching us, you know, for you who could be a parent, for you who could be a teenager or, you know, someone even at an early age. In this world, it's a bit confusing and everything seems not to be working. Everything seems to be adulterated and taken to a certain side. But you still have to choose. If you opt to be like Abram, of whom we read about in the story, who was 50-50 serving all sides, then you may end up in losing it all. So I encourage all of us at the end of this lesson to know that there is that line in the sand and there is what you ought to do and what you ought to keep off. Otherwise, we're going to lose both sides. So that's good, and I pray that the lesson will bless you as you go through it. Thank you. Amen. Finally, in Joshua chapter 24, verse 31, it says, And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. Joshua left a legacy before he died. And he left the laws of God which he reminded the Israelites that they should continue following them. And it's a beautiful testimony given here that even long after he died, the people still continued to follow the laws of God. Romans 12 verse 2 tells us that we should not be conformed to this world, but that we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind, that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So I just want to challenge you, my panelists, and to challenge you, our viewer, that indeed, what legacy will you leave here on earth? Choose ye this day whom you will serve, whether it be the Lord our God, or whether it will be these gods, the idols, the small g gods, who actually we have to keep reminding them of what we want, but our God who is faithful will be faithful and will stand faithful to the end. So I'd like to invite Silas to close for us in prayer. Let's pray. Our kind and loving Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your care. We thank you for these lessons that you've given us to learn about what you decide, what you want for us and giving us the option to choose. This day, we pray that you may help us apply and give us the strength to choose the right side. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Join us next Sabbath for another interesting lesson. God bless you.